When picking a protein powder, here are the two most important things you should consider. One, number one. Make sure it's got protein in it. That's right. No, number one. <laughs> that is important. It needs to be free from impurities. Uh, believe it or not, a remarkable amount of protein powders have high amounts of heavy metals. That's not good for you. Number two, is it easily digestible for you? That's it. Those are the two things you need to consider. Aside from that, I mean, what kind of protein you get, how the flavor, all that stuff, not nearly as important. So, free from impurities, and is it easy to digest? This is what people need to focus on. Last episode my, before we go on vacation, I thought I'd fuck with you on your, uh, your my, intro there. My intro there? Yeah. You did good. It didn't break stride. That was pretty Never. good. So, there is, a, there is actually one more thing that I think is important to consider. At least I remember this being a challenge with clients when they would go out to go buy protein, right? So, I would... Typically tell my client like, oh, here's a couple brands that I like, right? You know, check these out. And, you know, inevitably, you know, one out of three would come back with a brand that I didn't say, you know, yeah. and they and then they would be like, oh, I found this one it was for cheaper. way cheaper, yeah. you know, and I and one of the things that the one of the hustles of many hustles that the supplement industry has, but one of the hustles in, in the protein market because that's the, the most expensive part is the amount of protein in there. And then is it like third party tested and is it actually yeah. got what it's saying? Right. So the first hustle of the, the amount of protein that's in it, some of these protein powders you'll notice uh, need two scoops in order to get like the amount of protein that you're looking for. So it'll be like mm. 40 grams of protein, but then it's like two scoops. So one right. scoop is only 20 grams. Right. The protein powder that I wanted you to go get was say 38 grams of protein and it was one scoop. And so, and then you're looking at the weights about the same. And so a lot of people don't pay attention to the serving size and the ratio of protein per scoop mm -hmm. makes a big difference on the price point a lot of times. And so it's one of those hustles that protein powders will do is they'll make it look like it's a better deal because it's cheaper, but in reality, you're getting half the the protein in the yeah. in the total jug. Well, so, so protein just a bunch more of sugary powder. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like, and the here. So here's what's crazy with the protein powder market. If, if you look at the actual investigative studies on protein powders, they are dismal. Okay, there were protein companies, large ones, that were caught doing what's called amino acid spiking. So what is that? When companies go in to test the protein powder to see if it actually has as much protein as it says it has, they don't test all the amino acids. That's way too expensive. They'll test certain key amino acids, and if they're at a certain amount, they can deduce and say, okay, there's 30 grams of protein per serving. So what do these companies do? They would have crap protein in there and then just spike it with extra amino acid powder yeah. so that it would show up on the test and, and it would show, oh, it's got this much protein. So they lied. Mm -hmm. Number two... Remember that big study on vegan protein powders yeah, that came out? All the metals. Yeah. Heavy, the heavy metal content in them was so bad that if you took a scoop of this every day, like most people do, and you did it for like a couple years, you would have heavy metal concentrations in your system that would cause side effects, adverse effects, neurological effects, anxiety, inflammation, hormonal effects. And what sucks about that is you would have no idea it was your protein powder. You would go to the doctor. Doctor would be like, I don't know what's wrong with you. You go to this person, I don't know what's wrong with you. I'm going to test my gut, what's happening. And you think this protein powder couldn't possibly yeah. be it until you got your your metals tested, and then you'd have to like go through now. All why your vegan specifically? Like, why did they herbicides and pesticides? Right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yep. Okay. Herbicides and sense. pesticides. The organic ones, believe it or not, were higher in heavy metals because organic pesticides are higher hmm. in some of these heavy metals. Now, at the time, this why is, is that? Oh, because they're they're pulling from things like uh, beans and yes, stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, that was a good question, Justin. I was like, you know, that, I've never thought yeah, about why. Yeah, the, but the that's why. That are yes. Way, yeah. 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 Yes. So, like, uh, what are the top? What are the top four things that vegan proteins derive their protein from? I know soy, shit like peas, like, soy, uh, peas, uh, rice, peas, amaranth. You'll have uh, pumpkin seeds, and all those are getting hmm. blasted with pesticides. They can right, yeah. and so um, it's different than pulling from. You know, dairy. Just, yes, yeah. yes. Now, yeah. now with milk, uh, whey protein, that's where the amino acid, um, you know, spiking was happening. There could be other stuff in there that have been found in other tests. But I remember when that happened, we were all up in arms. Uh, we got this report. Oh, yeah. I immediately got on the phone with Organifi. This was years ago. And it, by the way, this is- When we first started working with them. This was a turning point. And I don't want to say a turning point, but this was one of the most memorable uh, moments in our relationship with Organifi because of how they responded. I got on the phone with them and I said, are yours tested? Because if they're not tested, we will stop selling them until mm -hmm. it's verified that they're not high in heavy metals. I'm not going to advocate 
that my listeners take your product and I take your product and we're, you know, essentially poisoning people. And they said, no, 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 already, already ahead of you. And they sent me third party testing, very clean. So that's why that's important. And then the second one is digestibility, because if you're eating the amount of protein that is considered optimal for muscle building, fat loss, for satiety, for recovery, all that stuff, it's a lot of protein. Okay. So if you're taking a protein powder to make up the difference, you're probably taking anywhere between 30 to 80 grams of protein versus uh, worth of protein powder. If it throws your digestion off, uh, it's causing more inflammation. And over time, you're going to get not just less out of it, it's causing more harm than good. Now, I say this because a lot of people, myself included, when I was a kid, I thought it, it was just it was part of the game. You take protein powder, you have gas. You have digestive issues. Yeah. That's, you know, they call it protein farts or whatever. No, that's not good. Taking an extra 30 grams of protein that disrupts your, your gut health is not worth the 30 grams of protein. So it should feel like when you take your protein powder, you should feel like that was so easy to digest. That was really good. And then it should be very clean. It should provide you, if you ask for it, with testing. Is this tested for heavy metals? Organifi takes it a step further and tests for glyphosate residue. They even, they even test and show that their products are glyphosate residue free. Glyphosates are the, you know, Roundup, right? The, the herbicide that's sprayed all over genetically modified plants uh, that's been linked to non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in people who use it, um, has been shown to potentially disrupt the gut microbiome and all that stuff. Today's giveaway is MAPS Anabolic Advanced. If you want to win that program, do this. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. We're also running a huge, huge promotion right now because it's the beginning of the year. Check this out. We have four program bundles, each one of them between $300 to $350 off. The first one is the new to weightlifting bundle. The second one is the body transformation bundle. The third one is the new year extreme intensity bundle. And the fourth one is the body transformation bundle 2.0. All of them on sale right now. Just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Well, that's crazy because even then, like the plants would have to be covered because the rain itself yep. they've tested has like glyphosate residue in it. So it's it's pretty difficult to, you know, abide by that kind of a standard. You know what happens to some organic farms? There'll be an organic farm. And next to it is another one. That's right. Yeah. And they'll fly the plane over and blast, you know, glyphosates over their plants and there'll be a little There was bit a of, documentary. Yeah. Uh, what documentary was that where they did that and there there was a like an organic farm that was just next to a bunch of other ones that was get all they were failing all their tests and stuff like that because of just the wind blowing it over bro it goes even farther crazy it goes even farther so uh monsanto corn right gmo corn which is a product a patented product of a company like monsanto they sell you the corn and then they sell you the glyphosate to go along with it the corn has been modified to not die when spread with this herbicide so they blast their fields of corn, corn survives because it's been genetically modified, but all the other plants die. Did you know this that, is the, this is what the documentary was about? Okay. That, that it blew over Seeds. and it, it changed it changed this guy's crop, and then they came Monsanto over to sued, sued them. They sued for them. using their products. That's what the documentary. Was. I was like, I know I watched a what? documentary that was related to that, and that's that what it was. The, the, yes. Yeah. So they would go in this organic farmer who's not even planting your patented, you know, corn. Yeah. Because some of the corn from the field over, obviously the wind blows, whatever, yeah, some seeds come over. Seeds they find some in your crop, sued them, yeah. and won. Yeah. And this was like a game that they were playing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. You, by the way, do you guys know the the history of how GMOs became? You got to remember what document. You, you must watch the same documentary as I did. I watched it a long time it ago. It wasn't a documentary. I've just read about it. Oh, yeah, oh. Yeah, there's, yeah. yeah, there's a whole documentary about it. That's it was terrible. Really, uh, it's really It was really good. Told the whole story of the, the, the big lawsuit. Because it happened to someone in particular that- it like really fucked you, him. And they were trying to, they were intentionally trying to like bully him out. I know. And that was like one of the strategies that they used. Do you was, know one of these, do you know what these, uh, how they got these things to um, get patent, to be able to get, uh, become patented? It went all the way up to, I mean, some of the top courts because you're not allowed to patent plants or nature. So they made the argument that this is not natural. But the argument mm. was, we're going to, we want this to be able to be patented because it's our product. We modified it in a lab. However, we also want to be able to call it corn because we don't want the consumer to look at the ingredient list and see GMO corn. We know that that would not let us sell as many. So we want to be able to patent it, but also call it the same name as its natural counterpart. That's so dumb. There are other products like this. I don't How know if you guys know this. Pass? 
You, I don't know if you guys know this. Where they they'll they'll get approval to name something something weird. Well, aren't they going to go through this? They're going to go through the same thing with meat, right? Yes. I mean, we're going to have that same problem. It's like they're going to want to name it meat. It's like it's really not though, right? No. And there's also there are other things that they'll it'll be like AP forty five or something like that in the ingredient. You don't know what it is. But is that what the doc is, right there, dude? What's it called? Yeah, two thousand eight. The world according to Monsanto. Yeah. Didn't Monsanto make Agent Orange? I don't know if that's the doc. Uh, I believe they, they did. did. They yeah, made Agent they Orange. Did. Okay, because I, I know it was like Bear did a lot of the, um, the they did poisonous the, gas. They did the poisonous gas yeah. in the concentration camps. Yeah. That's what Bayer did, German yeah, company. Really dark history. I know, but so Monsanto made Agent Orange, uh, they used in Vietnam to clear, make clearings in the for, in the jungle for yeah. to land their helicopters. And a lot of soldiers came back with with illnesses and cancers. Was your dad exposed to Agent Orange? Yeah, yeah. He was? Wow. Yeah, he was a little bit to where the, uh, he's actually now, there, there was like a class action kind of a thing that um, you had to go get psych eval and all this kind of stuff. And he's now wow. receiving like medical benefits, like slightly now, but it's like, I mean, he's in late seventies, you know, at this point. So wow. it's already done its, <laughs> its damage. But um, yeah, dude, it's, you know what else was crazy? I was thinking about this. Like, you know how this big hustle of like trying to repurpose like petroleum and then like turn into plastics yeah. and do all these types of things? You know, they actually made like sweeteners out of petroleum. Out of petroleum. Like, what the fuck? Did you really? do you know do you know if we, we eliminated were eating all this stuff? If we eliminated petroleum, how screwed we would be? Do you know how many products and medicines and plastics and yeah. Of course, fuel and stuff is based off petroleum. It's crazy. If you look it up. Yeah. That the, was the double-edged sword, right? Oh, yeah. There, there's a chart that shows uh, the use of oil or petroleum and the worldwide population. And it just, it spurred this explosion. Uh, so it's like, there's a lot of challenges with it, but also like, we can't take it away because. Yeah. At this point, it's essential the way we structured everything. Oh, yeah. yeah. Clothes and medicines and all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah. But yeah, with protein powders, people are so concerned with like, you know, which one is the, has the best amino acid profile, which one is the most anabolic or whatever. Um, and yes, if if they're if they're all clean and they all are easy to digest, that's something you should consider. But if you have one protein powder that is not equivalent in terms of bio, you know, it, it's not as bioavailable. For example, let's look at like you could go with collagen, for example, or you know, bone broth protein uh, versus let's say whey or vegan protein versus whey. Whey is more bioavailable, more anabolic. But if whey you don't digest well and vegan or bone broth you do digest well, go with the one that you digest well. It's going to do you better. Yeah. It'll do you much better. Yeah. So anyway. I've actually been doing the the Paleo Valley one a lot. I did the bone broth, the bone broth one that you finally you got us on. What I haven't tried is I saw we have a bunch of – we have a vanilla and we have the unflavored. I, I'm almost out of the, the, the one that you called the chocolate donut one. Oh, yeah. Once that's uh, done, I'll try the the other one. But I just noticed that I can I can push it all the way up to like 50, 60 grams. No problem. And, and not have any yeah. problems with this. Speaking so. of Paleo Valley, you use their their uh, beef tallow? Oh, yeah. Oh. So Has Shana, anybody else used it? Yeah. Yeah, I've, I I've have. Did she send all of us? So yes. We all got it, right? So every year around you Thanksgiving. You know, old Dude. school oil to cook with. Yeah, yeah. we cooked uh, uh, potatoes like with it. Oh, uh, off air. Doug and I were talking about that's what, air fryer. that's what McDonald's used to use mm. originally. So good. Yes. Oh, my God. It was yeah. like way better. Yeah, crispy I, and everything. You know yeah, why, I you know why the, they I stopped using the, it? I cooked a steak in there. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. You put it in a pan and everything? Well, I mean, I, I slow cooked it first, right? So I took it, I brought it up to the temperature, just like we talked the other day about, and then I, you know, reverse seared it. And then I just, I, I did finished it in the tallow. So the tallow, what's the difference between that butter, whatever that you used before, the flavor and. Yeah. So it has a little bit of, yeah, it has that kind of beef flavor to it. So it's a little bit different flavor than like a uh, butter does. Uh, it, you know, it, it, burns off at a higher temperature so like if you're cooking like if you if you sear a steak on like a cast iron and you use like say butter or olive oil well olive oil not so much too well olive oil too actually you'll notice that the, the when you get it real because i get it really really hot it'll it'll start to to burn off smoke yeah it'll yeah. smoke and burn off yeah, yeah. the tallow like stays in there so i didn't need to need, i didn't need as much and i was scooping it like i would butter because i would like it's supposed to be ideal for high temperature cooking Right, which means you don't need as much if you're just doing like a sear like I was doing. So I definitely overdid it on the amount in there, not thinking that about the, the temperature mm -hmm. that it burns at. And so it stayed like in, so which is kind of nice. If you're going to sear something like that, it would have last a lot longer than like, you know, uh, you know what's what's clarified butter called again? Uh, ghee. 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 Ghee or butter or oil like that. So it's nice. Now I'll, I'll be able to just use like a little tablespoon of it where I put a pretty big gob on there that I had like, 
I, I, I deep fried like my deep steak. Fried your steak. Yeah, I deep fried my steak a little more than I you was. Should have made a chicken fried. Tried steak, to, but you know? I mean, it did make this, uh, yeah. you know, beautiful brown crust on the steak, and I had slow cooked it, you know, so it was, it was you, a good do, steak. You guys know why McDonald's stopped using beef tallow? They yes. got sued by a vegan because they said you didn't tell me that this had. So off air, Doug and I were talking about this, and I heard him say mm. that. He, he heard or believes that after that, when they switched over to vegetable oil, that they put something in it to still give you kind of that, that, you know, iconic flavor. Oh yeah. Yeah. Some kind of beef flavor. Oh no. They went, if you, it used to be beef tallow. This yeah, is what we fry our fries now. Yeah. They went to their That's engineers. They went to their engineers and scientists and basically engineered an oil and, you know, flavoring and stuff to make it taste like beef tallow. So we went from beef tallow, natural. One ingredient to yeah. Franken oil artificial. And stuff. Yeah, I hope it tastes like it. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. I wish I remember because you said that was what eighties, nineties. When was I it? I think it was nineteen eighty when they switched. I don't remember how the fries find tasted out when it switched before then. It, it, I think so it was nineteen eighty. Eighty. This the, like, the, the fries are epic. I mean, that's oh yeah. The McDonald's best. fries when they're hot. Yeah, oh. McDonald's fries. They've yeah. engineered the shit out of those. Is, yeah, is they definitely have figured. Did figured. I tell you guys I had McDonald's? Like, uh, why is a vegan in McDonald's? Huh. Why are they hanging oh, out at McDonald's? I'm wrong. It's 1990. So we grew up eating real French fries as kids. <sighs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. It's <laughs> all silent. No, well, yeah. no, I'm just we had a moment there. Couple, <laughs> well, <laughs> what I'm thinking is, I, how much McDonald's did I really have before? I mean, I, I, I'm. I did eat their fries. Somebody said nine years old for me. They they switched over, mm-hmm. and so I, I don't know how much McDonald's we had. I mean, when I was a kid, like Mc- you, McDonald's mm-hmm. was like a big treat. Chicken, oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's maybe like, a oh, handful yeah, of times I had. Oh, it. when I was yeah. a kid, oh, McDonald's. I ate. Was a big I ate deal. most. Of my, you know, it's bad. I probably ate most of my fast food as a teenager and young trainer. When you right? could buy yourself. Yeah, yeah. 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 So Same. from. You know, probably Carl's Jr. Yeah, thirteen, fifteen to you know twenty. Here's 23 when I to ate 24. fast food. I ate fast food. Uh, first of all, when it was a big deal. Like we ate out once in a great while, and when we did, it would be either McDonald's or KFC, or if it was a really big deal, we go out to pizza. But it wasn't often because it was too expensive for us. Or when I would go to work with my dad in the summer. So in the summers, I'd work with my dad and I'd be his helper, and he didn't pay me. But what he would do for me is every morning on the way to the job, he would stop by McDonald's and let me order, you know, their their breakfast nice. sandwiches or whatever. You know what I think is one of the most interesting th- things about my my journey of eating fast food and not eating fast food is uh, that I wish someone told me maybe when I was younger or when I even when I was in my early twenties and I was still eating it is once you've disciplined yourself to to get it completely out of your life. It never tastes as good as it used to taste when you were eating it habitually. You have to work in. You have to work yeah. it out. You yeah. have to eat it for a while. Which to me it just you highlights your way the there. the yeah. level of processing that are in there. Totally. I, I experienced this with even like protein bars. I told you guys yeah. my my journey with like the Quest bars and like completely not eating them, and then and then coming back and going like, oh, these aren't that good, and then like still eating them, and then going, oh, these are great, and then oh my god, I'm craving these. I want lots of these. Like that. That's a similar journey like with fast food. Like. You know, my memories as a kid or early 20s eating all these fast food restaurants were, oh, my God, it was so amazing and you craved it. And then I got rid of it like completely and didn't have it in my life for years. And then remember reintroducing it. Oh, you know, it's been so long since I've had a doesn't Whopper. Taste as good as you oh, it's awful. Yeah. It's it just it doesn't hit. It doesn't hit the same. It doesn't uh, sit in you the same. You know which one's the it's worst? It's like the best blessing in disguise is totally. that you uh, you know I'll, I know I'll never ever go back to wanting that all the time. And I know there's people out there listening right now who have probably never consistently cut say fast food out for years out of their life and then done that. And anybody who has, I guarantee has experienced exactly what I'm talking about. And so if you're that person who wants to, and I do that, the, the trick is to, to eliminate it well, for a long enough period of time that you, it gets rid well, of that. Remember the documentary supersize me? Yeah. When the guy was eating McDonald's every day. And he said, I don't remember what week it was, but maybe week two, he said, wow, now I'm actually starting to crave it. Whereas at first he kind of felt like, oh, this is too much. That's right. He did talk about that. Uh-huh. He did talk about how it wasn't that good. Mm-hmm. And he was forcing himself, and then you see him change. Crave it. Yeah, like oh, yeah. so good. The 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 worst one for that, where you remember it tasting better than it was, is Taco Bell. Taco Bell. Oh when I was a kid, I don't know. I remember it tasting good, right? Have you ever had a bean burrito, like as an adult? What is that? It's literally. What is it? It's yeah. just I don't know. It's, like, it's like gelatinous. Yeah, dude. You, ooze. you yeah. look at it like, what is this? This yeah. is yeah. terrible. In, in like a yeah. My tortilla. school served them. We actually at lunch we had we had bean burritos. At my, yeah, at you my should look that up because you brought that up and I told you that. Uh, yeah, I used to pound those. It was uh, t- Taco Bell did have. <laughs> you liked them that much. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
It was some they they had a partnership with schools. Look at look up Taco Bell partners with with uh, education system or something, Doug, because. There was a period of time when I was in high school when that was the only like we had we had I think two options it was a bean burrito or something else I don't know if I remember what the second thing was but there was two things all we had was bean burritos maybe it was only bean burritos there was like one or two things you know only. we had for I don't know why I just remember this there were two two items at lunch that were like like this is what you Chalupas. got this is what you got say what. Was it, it wasn't a chalupa? No, no. I just like it, saying that. That was know, way before, that's, bro. That's not a real thing. No, chalupa right? didn't come yeah, out what is to, it? That's not even like didn't come out until later. You know, chalupas weren't around when we were in high school. Uh, uh, yeah, that's yeah. an American made up. That's not a real thing. It's like right? Andrew, Dorito. Uh, Andrew, chalupa is not a real Mexican food, bro, right? That's so racist. Why are you asking him? Because he's Mexican. Who else <laughs> am I asking here? Huh? I'm not going to ask you. Come on, he's, he's, know. He knows. He's, he counts. He's upset right now because he knows. I even asking him made him made him upset. Chalupa. It's not a real food. Yeah. When I was a kid, it was uh, in high school either the bean burrito or cheese bread. We had something called cheese bread that everybody wanted to eat. The pizza. So we had a round table. Did a thing. Oh, you guys had round table. Yeah, it was. Yeah, what would you go? Cheese you, bread. Damn, bro. Yeah. You went to expensive school. Yeah, I mean, just, <laughs> oh, the cafeteria. You're not the cheese bread. City, yeah, bro. No, no, yeah, pizza. It was like French school. bread uh, pizza things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you those. figure it out, Doug? Well, I see that Taco Bell did uh, supply burritos to some schools. Yeah. This was back in 1993, this article. Well, that well, I, it was 96 it was when I was in high so, school. So, yeah. So, maybe it was the leftovers from 93? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, the Borkids got in yeah. 96. Well, it was the cheapest, dude. That was the so, cheapest option. So, so that's so why everybody go there. It was brought to your high school in 93. Like <laughs> Whatever you guys did buy, bucks. my school got, dude, in 96. What, what they didn't sell? Yeah. Give, send these to poor kids. Yes, send these, they won't know the difference. They don't know. Just freeze it. It's fine. <laughs> to, to be clear on the chalupa thing, it is a Mexican tradition. It is? Yeah. Where? Man. Oh, it's, it's basically just masa or corn dough in like a boat shape, like a taco shape. Oh, my God. Uh, it's a real thing. Thank you for pointing out I feel like being wrong idiot. again, Andrew. How about Jeez. the chimichanga? Chimichanga, I haven't had a lot of those. I don't. Is I'm that a real Mexican that. food? I wouldn't be surprised if that one's. The Mexican Mexico. pizza was the best thing in Taco Bell. Hands oh down. my god, what are you doing? <laughs> Mexican pizza <laughs> was damn it. So, so, by I the way, that. going back to the McDonald's thing, it, it looks like they did that because uh, of health reasons. Not because they were sued. Health. Yeah. Boy, I mean, this guys, is what I'm hearing. Had attacking sure. vegans health for no reasons. reasons. I'm sure. Health yeah. reasons. Oh, oh I know. because of the trans. No, I mean, because of the saturated fats. So they replaced with trans fats. They yeah, they replaced it with trans fats. They have since twice changed their formulation. What does that have to do with No, 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 no. It's just because the transgenders, we got no, no, more, no, 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 no more, no more of the trans fat, fat is fat that identifies. As anyway, <laughs> after they made after they made that switch wow. to the uh, the new fa the, the new oil, yeah. yeah, their stock went way down. Wow. Oh, it did. Yeah, yeah. Because people like the old a fries. Dumb move. Did I tell you guys I had uh, like a bunch of McDonald's like four weeks ago? Really? Yeah, so we had this all, a handful of times you've mentioned this on the podcast. Is I know. Starting to believe that you have a little bit of a McDonald's no, addiction. No, 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 no. We had a bunch of kids over to make cookies, <laughs> Christmas cookies. So we had all these, my cousins oh, yeah, I and all the brothers. Remember I told you about this? Yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, oh crap, we should get food for everybody. And it's a bunch of little kids. And I don't want to deal with like, what do you want? What do you <laughs> so want? So you're like, I'm going to poison them with McDonald's. I just ordered, <laughs> I ordered a big ass <laughs> thing of chicken nuggets, bro. Chicken nuggets and a big ass thing of fries. Yeah. So I had a few of them, okay? And immediately I could feel the depression. Like I ate it and I felt like, oh, so God, you what feeding all those brain? kids McDonald's, how's that different than the mom giving the six year old laxatives? Uh, wow. Uh, what? That's, a, that's a little bit of a jump. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, guy. Hey, yeah. That one mom. Yeah. You might as well be poisoning my kid. Yeah. Walks out all angry after you know putting frosting on the cookies. Yeah. The kids are right, right. Cookie with frosting. <laughs> that's that mom. Do you guys ever go to a birthday party where instead of a uh, chocolate cake, it was a carob? Cake. Did you guys ever do that? What's oh. a carob cake? Carob is a terrible, terrible replacement for chocolate. For some reason, health people thought never this is heard like of it. chocolate. I, no, I it's not. Heard I mean, of that. look yeah, up carob. Yeah, I've I've tried it before. Yeah, it, so there was a period where people thought chocolate was bad for you. Yeah, and so they obviously like everything. They, they come up with, with some something. piece of garbage that is probably <laughs> really made with lab. a ton of sugar. Anyways, right? right? Ch Chimichanga is from Arizona, not Mexico. So there you go. Uh, yeah. Where, you know what I like about the creation? chimichangas? I didn't even hear you, you guys. Know what, oh, oh he, he mentioned it. I think uh, Doug, you know what I like about chimichang? You know what I like about American foods that are invented to sound like uh, ethnic foods? <laughs> the way they name them. I know. That's such an American that person going, like, what are we going to call this? Yeah. <laughs> Let's name it something that sounds Spanish. Chimichanga? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, dude. <laughs> What's the Italian version of that? I mean, uh, you got Chef Boyardee's creation. But that's so. not his actual, do you know that? His real name is Boyardee. Boyardee. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> they changed the spelling. I told okay. you guys about that. Yeah. Hey, I want to hear about your 
incredible experience at the DMV. Why? You don't want to. Yeah, I do, no. bro. It, How now? Are they? Are they? Have they come up to? What were you down 1990 there for? standards? Are they still behind? What's going on? I, so I I what? bought a car. Uh, oh, that's why you had to I go down there. Register it. Yeah. Oh. And if you don't register it in a certain amount of time, like you get like all these like fines. And, of course. And not only that, apparently you have to drive it there so they inspect it so i you get you a, drove it there you need a no. cop you need a cop friend bro yeah a cop can come to your house and actually do all that stuff really so if you have a yes you have a friend that's why i had just done remember when i told oh, you yeah. yeah yeah well i do need a cop friend that yeah sounds like. yeah that yeah. Yeah, i didn't have to go to dmv at all you know what your problem the, is you know yeah. your problem is you're a lone ranger you never ask anybody that's right anybody. that is your fault <laughs> he has a cop friend for you, that's right. you, you could, uh, i just wore it's, this because i knew i'd be crabby today yeah so, uh, <laughs> That's that was not why like, you wore it. You wore it because you beat crabs again. Good job. Yeah, Congratulations. So, okay, so you, you, went, down, you went down there You went down there to register the car <laughs> yeah. without the car. Did well, you have problems? Yeah, did have problems, yeah. And it, it wasn't because of that. I could have came back for that. But uh, apparently, like, so I got it from a dealer who, like, sent me the paperwork of the loan, all this stuff. And the, the guy didn't sign off a wet signature on this one form, this is like bureaucracy 101, dude. Oh. It's always like, and I'm like, I just knew it was going to be some form or something or some stamp or some person that's going to give me a hassle. So I was just like expecting it. And of course, you know, to no avail, like, uh, we can't process this because it doesn't have the wet signature from this. And so if I did that, you know, it, it would be invalid and uh, whatever, dude, I stopped listening. And I was like, <laughs> okay, lady, you know, what do I got to do? So she stamps it. I'm like, I just want to avoid the fines. And so I have to like write up something uh, to try and plead the fact that I'm there. I'm on time. I'm doing my thing. But it, the dealer kind of screwed me because they didn't sign this thing. And so that's where I'm at. Oh, man. So it was a waste of time? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. 100% a waste of time. Yeah. Wow. It's always a waste of time. Yeah, wow, Because dude. the it's not really a business. No, dude. It's it's just a thing. It's like a... If they privatize it's an amoeba, it, I, it's, you have I to go such a deal hassle with. Doing my, uh, the car was such a hassle. It's such a pain in the ass, all the things that you have to do. And it's, and you added yeah. the fact, I don't know what you're dealing with right now with insurance. Like, insurance is a, is, uh, is a pain in the thankfully, ass. Thankfully, like, because it's an older car, like, there was the, the Grundy. It's it, it They cover a lot of these older cars. That wasn't a hassle at all. Dude, uh, dude the reason why it's such a pain in the ass, the reason why but, when you go to the DMV... And everything looks like it's from 1995 and yeah. everybody's slow as hell yeah. and it's redundant as hell. <laughs> the reason is because they don't go out of business. There's no competition. They don't go out of business. There's they no can, competition. Imagine of if we can I just, if we were the only fitness podcast that existed. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we would suck. Yeah. We would we wouldn't be nearly as no yeah, you, you no don't have to after. try. That's the thing. I always like and so I didn't have my earphones or anything. Normally I would do that to try and like, you know, Call have himself. my own little space. But I didn't, and so I'm sitting there, and then you listen to all these conversations people are having, and like how pissed off everybody is about, like, well, you guys didn't notify me, yeah. and I'm here, and I got all this, and you know, just like this guy's raging with this lady who and, chooses to work at the DMV. I would oh, hate that because so now bad. you're dealing. I don't you know think what? you do. I well, think that's like that's like dude. Not that's. I don't think any, I don't think any kid grew up was like I want to yeah, work yeah. at the DMV when I get older. Yeah. I think that's like so the, the first person you meet like can barely speak English when I'm getting in there too, and I'm like what like you don't have like i'm sorry but like your first person your interaction you're meeting with to like direct yeah. you around I'm like like this is this is a problem you yeah know? like I, it's a cluster it's a cluster. so that's what i had it's infuriating to me it's yeah. infuriating makes you almost want to give the car back it's so <laughs> yeah. fucking keep the goddamn car like, i don't, even want, illegal, I don't even want this thing yeah. anymore <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> gas you know they don't like gas here you know oh, already yeah, yeah. like yeah so yeah, it's, sure it's full gas oh, this yeah. is a gas car yeah <laughs> wait that you had to mark that down. well they almost try yeah, to make me to smog it. even though it's like 60s you know and i'm like no 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 like it doesn't need to be smog because it's an older vehicle yeah they're like well yeah they want to know the they want to know the the engine, everything. It's, it, yeah, they're, they're real invasive these days. Yeah, yeah it's uh, California a, rocks. I thought this was America. Yeah, it's, you ever watch that? It's old, not really America anymore. Do you guys dude. ever watch that old old video? It was like it was like 1980. I think they filmed it, and it was a town in Texas. Okay, that had just passed the drunk driving law. Yeah. It's the funniest video you've ever seen in your life. So they're interviewing people who are driving, and it's always oh, like these I dudes driving that. home from work, and they just pass the law. This so is you un-American. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just want to have a beer yeah. after work and chill out. Yeah, and like, this guy's like, drive I, myself home. Like, I work so hard. I just want to. I just want to crack open a beer on the way home. What the hell's the problem? I thought this was America. I'm yeah. fucking dying, dude. Put in a hard day's work. Put in 11, 12 hours a day, and then get in your truck and at least drink one or two beers. 
they're making it laws where you can't drink when you want to. You can't. You have to wear a seat belt when you're driving. And pretty soon we're gonna be a communist country. Oh, dude, speaking <laughs> of, we take it too far. <laughs> dude, I saw I saw this crazy video. I guess there's a place. I don't know if it's in um, New Zealand or somewhere else. I don't think it's in America, but uh, there was like this stunt where they had dogs driving cars. Like they. Why? literally teach dogs to drive cars and they have it all set up so the pedals and everything and the shift like the dogs doing all the things and turning and i'm like this is crazy but then it started to make sense because they were doing this all to like uh for adoption for for uh dogs oh, to like, get you to adopt the dog yeah it's like <laughs> oh funny. this dog is capable of so much if you just <laughs> teach him there's my designated driver yeah <laughs> yeah i always wanted i wanted to do that you get pulled over you're like yeah, yeah, it's this guy. This guy was driving. He's, he's all over the that's place. A, that's his yeah. beer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he saw a squirrel, dude. I, I you know, he just goes. He just goes after it. He sees a cat driving. <laughs> car, car chase. We'll put that video. I'm not even joking. This is a real thing. Wow, dude. Dogs. You know. You know. Dog. I think was it a dog that was the first, and like organic. Like you know, uh, creature oh, to go to, space. to go to space, right? It was a dog, dog or monkey. He was a monkey. I think it was a dog. Was okay. the first. I thought it was a chimpanzee. I thought the Soviets sent Soviet the Soviets sent up a dog. First. I thought it was a chimpanzee. Mm. That's why the whole Planet of the Apes movie was all made based around that. No, it wasn't made. Oh, think, think of that. that. It had something to do with that. Isn't that what I they don't think so? But I know uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it was based. On <laughs> I thought that was. Yes, the, I you're correct. That was the, it is a dog. Sputnik oh, two. Dog. Wow. Yeah. Wow, they'll make up for you being wrong earlier. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna give you that one. It just cancels your chalupa, bro. All you do is cancel your chalupa. Just cancel the chalupa. You're at zero, dog. Hey, what's that dog thinking too? By the way, like he gets in there, like he's looking at everybody. All right, guys. Oh shit. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think he made it back alive, though. Right. I don't think so. Oh really? Yeah. I think they just got him up there, and then that's it. Well, it's a dark. That's fucked. Well, I mean, this is this is before story. PETA would have been all over their ass yeah. for sure. Right? <laughs> yeah. 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 PETA. Well, we not got him there. Yeah, I said PETA, not PETO, Doug. I, I did not said PETA. No, I did not say PETO. <laughs> we can send all some... the PETOs out to space. Yeah, can you oh. send forever? Some kids up yeah, there? shoot oh. them all out there. Wow. That's fine. Are you guys all? So, what's everybody got for uh, Christmas Day? Or who's? Are you with a big family group? Are you with a big family group? Yeah, or does yeah. Christmas? Oh, you do. Yeah, we're doing Christmas Eve alone. <laughs> Um, because you know, we wanted to have a nice intimate setting. This is like one of the compromise, you know, things that we do because all of our, all our events are with my, you know, massive. Yeah. Family. I meant to ask you that. What has, what, what traditional things around the holidays have changed for you, uh, since you have Jessica now, what is she, what, what is your compromise on that? So help. Katrina. Well, that's, that's it. That's all Katrina. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that's it. We're doing, we, we're doing Christmas Eve alone. And you normally wouldn't. Oh, never. Oh, okay. Never in my life have I done. Uh, a big holiday like that without being with everybody. And then, then Christmas Day. Christmas Day, we're going over okay. to the family. Yeah. So what would you normally do on Christmas Eve? What's it look family like? Family too. I mean, oh, but what? You just oh, all get go, together in the house? We all get together. And it used to be this way, although with little kids, now everybody's changed it. But it used to be we'd all get together and go past midnight, open gifts at midnight, and then go home and come back the next day. No, it's very similar to Katrina's. Yeah. Except for they all spend the night together at the same that's, house. Yeah, that's next level, bro. Yeah, I, we don't But it's literally that. that. They literally... Stay up, like yeah. so Christmas Eve, everybody stays up late, playing games, drinking, and then they we do white elephant at midnight. Wow. And then the kids can normally get the open one present, and then, you know, by one, two in the morning, they start calming down and then go to bed. You and know, wake up at six. I don't think I've ever shared this, <laughs> but here's something that's changed for me. This has nothing to do with our families. I <clears throat> never liked Christmas. I know. Really? No. Wow. No? Interesting. Wow. I you never you like liked Thanksgiving? it. Thanksgiving? Huh? You like Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving was my favorite holiday. I didn't like Christmas because You're so different. Uh, as a kid, I liked Christmas, right? But then as I was growing up, um, I especially when I was atheist, right? I I viewed the whole thing as like this commercialized. Like you go to the mall, it's packed. Oh my god! People are trying a, to find what parking. An angry atheist way to one hundred percent. One hundred percent. Associate the mall with it. One hundred percent. It's over. I'm like, oh, you're you're obligated to buy presents. Yeah. It's not really gift giving well, if you're obligated. Mall, hell no. It's all crazy busy. Like everywhere I go, go to the mall, it's packed. Everybody's acting whatever. This sucks. Hmm. Um, it, you know, it's the weather. I don't like the weather. So I just everything I don't like. I just didn't like the season of Christmas. Never did. Dang. Jessica is like uh, Elf. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Christmas to her is the greatest time of the year. Everything. Mm -hmm. Music. Uh, this, the, she'll play music in the house. That's Christmas music. She'll light Christmas candles. She'll yeah. decorate everything. She'll mm -hmm. make Christmas food. Mm -hmm. It's just like she just lights up. She loves going to the mall. I hated going to the mall. 
So gradually, um, you know, I kind of developed this better experience around it and I really started to like it even before I became a Christian. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So that's something that changed. Yeah, that is, that's yeah. way different. Huh. And yeah. then you, no, I like it. What do you, what, what will you do? Oh, for Christmas and Christmas Eve, we do, um, we'll go to a service on Christmas Eve with We're going Corby's to, we're going with you guys. Well, yes. We'll see you guys there. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. I was going to see. Yeah. Cause I know. Great show. To I know. I'd be with you guys, but we'll be at the, we have tickets to the enchantment thing. We did that. Oh yeah, yeah. We, that's all the lights over there. At yeah, the, yeah. We bought tickets cool. specifically on Christmas Eve, and I already had that, or else I would be joining you guys. It's pretty fun. Yeah. Do you know what your favorite, your son's favorite part is going to be? All the lights. No. What? The same thing that my son's favorite part is. As you're walking in, there's hella vendors selling cheap toys. <laughs> <laughs> it's just cheap yeah. light up toys, dude. Uh, like yeah. balloons, Opportunists. swords, and like yeah, shit that little boy's like. I'll let yeah, you know. We'll the, see. We'll the see. He's pretty. He's pretty. Necklaces he's pretty and into the the decor. He's definitely like. Like when we, anytime we come, every day we come home from school, like I, he always wants me to drive around the narrow, but I'm like, the lights aren't even on yet. He still you, wants to see it. Do you know what's yeah. good around there? There's the same, there's vendors outside leading in. So you mm -hmm. walk down a sidewalk, hella mm -hmm. vendors selling hella toys. They're mm -hmm. cheap or whatever. And they also have hot dog vendors that are making like amazing hot dogs, like okay. bacon wrapped and they'll put onion, whole deal. It's, it's really good. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cause oh, we wow. were just there last week. Oh, you guys were? We were. Yeah. Yeah, no, so the, I haven't gone, so I didn't go last year because you, you, the tickets sell out fast. Yes, they yeah, do. you got to get them in advance. So we got them way in advance yeah. so we could do it specifically on Christmas yeah. Eve with the whole family. So I'm going to go to that church service that you're going to. Yeah. Have you been to it? Yeah, I've been. It's so good. We've been. Um, it's so good. So do you go with just your immediate family or does your parents and everyone, who else just. Just Courtney's family. Typically we'll do that and we'll share Christmas Eve with her side and then we do my family the next day. Um, and so we go to church service, we go back and then we have this kind of like, um, it's like hors d'oeuvres and stuff. And then we, we open up a uh, presence with the, the cousins. Yeah. And so it's like a few there. And then after that, like we go watch a movie at my house and then like everybody goes to bed. We wake up in the morning, do our own thing, uh, with my family, like just the kids and Courtney and then probably like mid afternoon, like my parents and then my brother and everybody and. When do you, over. when, when do the kids, when do your boys open their presents from you guys? Like first thing in the morning, just you guys, just us. Yeah. So that's, that's what will be different this year for Katrina and I is that I, I you're do doing it. Santa where he wakes up and sees it. Yeah. And it'll just mm -hmm. be, it'll just the presents that are for him from basically Katrina and I, and you know, Santa Claus and our family, my yeah. family. Uh huh. We will open ourselves. Do you guys do stockings too? Yeah, yeah, yeah we yeah. have stockings. Here's a question I have for you guys. When I was Courtney a kid, does not like stockings. Really? Yeah, and I'm like, dude, those are the I easiest. I love it. Yeah, yeah I don't easy. know why. I like like finding little candy, stupid little knickknacks. Yeah, yeah. She's like, this is so painless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love. I <laughs> you love. You guys are like a. You guys are totally like a. Here's what I want for Christmas. Buy it for me. Uh, uh me? Not you. No, no. She's like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. That, that, that. This is conflict. You yeah, know? no, it's, no. It's, I'm pretty it's, talking about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. That's a sign you suck at. It. That's what. That yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Here, you're terrible at this. Let me help no, you. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, no, dude. It's analytical brain. You know? uh, yeah. It's like, I can't, I don't listen. Yeah. That's what that is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, I don't listen to you. Yeah, I listen. Bro, it took me a long, <laughs> it took me a really, really long time to get good at this. And it, and I, I don't even want to say I'm a master right now, but I've gotten pretty good at like listen throughout the year. I have, yeah. I literally you write it down. Yeah. It just, it, it, or you pay attention. Like, Ooh, I like this. Yeah, and then again, oh, honey, I like yeah, that was like, oh, in September. Yeah, I paid attention. <laughs> yeah. So when I was a kid and I got up with Santa's gifts, they were never wrapped or in a box. They were out. So my mm. parents would take whatever gift it was, take it out of the box. Now, the, re now the, the reasoning was it looked more real, like an elf made it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Jessica's family actually huh. wraps Santa's gift. So we, so, okay. Uh, we do, so I didn't do it that way. So I grew up hmm. that way also where like, it was, there was always, every year, uh, we had like, w traditionally we had one big gift and then everything was like yeah. knickknack shit yeah. after that. Okay. And the one big gift came from Santa and it was unwrapped normally. Same. And I, I think it had less to do, it was normally like a bike, a desk, like what else did I get? Like I remember things like that. Yeah. And so, yeah, my, my dad in the middle of the night would probably would put it together and yeah. then it would be yeah. out just right in front of the tree when you came out, which by the way, that was my big thing with Katrina is like, like. And and it's it's I'm glad we're starting it now because he's he's not quite at that age where 
he's got a thing that he's wanting all year. Like I'm excited for when that happens, yeah. right? When there's a thing that he wants that he's been asking for for months, and I go, well, your mom and dad aren't going to get that, but maybe Santa will bring it. Maybe yeah. Santa will bring it. And there's that suspense of maybe he will, and then I can have it all out, and then I could video him coming in yeah. and be like, you know, surprised that he he left it. So that's real. I'm looking forward to that. He's not quite at a thing where he obsesses about a thing yet. Aurelia. He likes all stuff. Oh, that's going to be so much fun. Uh, my yeah. three-year-old has been obsessing, obsessing since we came to your house over the garbage truck toy. Obsessing. Uh, that's hilarious. That's what he wants from Santa. That's all he wants from Santa. Did you guys Santa. get it already? Dude. Yeah. Okay, all he talks about is what it does, how you could put garbage in it. How you could, he talks about it. Tells me stories about it. You know. <laughs> yeah. but, but, the back, you could put garbage there in. It is. And you could take garbage yeah. out and you could My drive it around. My son's really into uh, trash and all that. Like That was like their thing when they were <laughs> his age. Oh, <laughs> loved it. They'd run outside, trash. That's you know, Chris. It, they called people trash. You know, what? Was, <laughs> that's our. That's my buddy. I don't know why hey, that's Chris. Trash. Chris Nagibi's son, who's the same age as as our kids, right? He's got a little one that's four. Uh, that he every I think it's Friday when their their trash guy comes. Like he's like his son. Like yeah, yeah. You know, and they got to run. He's got to he's standing out there in his slippers. Oh, okay. Aurelius misses watching it. him. It's watching a, him. It's bad. Dude, yeah, you yeah. know what's funny? I just thought of when you guys were talking about all that. Like uh, it's the Santa thing. Like so, from when I was growing up. Like, uh, Santa gave me this gift, but it's like uh, something my brother already owned. <laughs> like, this is bullshit, your, Santa. Your, your parents gave you hand me down yes. gifts. Yes, as a Santa, Santa gift. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck? No, they didn't. Yes, <laughs> they hey, did. Hey, 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 I'm like, why is Santa a, it's like, a, toy a cheap brother bastard? Brother. It's, all, it's all etched with a knife. It's a I just thought of that, dude. Like, I'm going to be getting so mad. Yeah. I was like, that looks uh, like that looks like his big wheel. Why is it? Yeah, I was like, is it? Wasn't this like Brandon's? Like, why is this? right there. Come on, Santa. Do better. Why is, why is the big wheel tire look all worn? <laughs> what the fuck? Dude? Dude, I'm so angry about that. I want a big, I want a big wheel so bad as an adult. Wouldn't you guys, would you guys ride a big wheel right didn't, now? Didn't they try and bring them back? Then is there a company that may, is making them again for adults? I, well, I think they are. I think I have fond, fond memories of so big do wheels. I. So do I. Because the the, the tires the were power plastic. slide. Yeah, oh, dude. power slide. You got no. The you know big why? Wheels were the best. And the, and if you if you pedal fast enough, yeah. it didn't get trapped. So yeah, you know they, they made, made those for adults for a minute. They, that's what I was just that's saying. Oh, yeah, that's what I, I think I, think I, want they, one. I think they oh, yeah, did. Yeah. I think I thought I saw a company that was. Making did you them guys one. have the? Oh, that's the like those are the. Get dude. out of here! How much is that? Only one hundred thirty-six bucks. There's, there's no way you can't have no, a that's good for, no. That's for kids. That's for kids. Why the? What the fuck was a big wheel? Wow! Bucks? Look at that. That's like the OG ones right there. Look at you can adjust. Remember you can adjust the seats like three level. Yeah. So I had. You know what kind of big wheel I had? I had Knight Rider big wheel. Oh yeah. So the front of it had the Knight Rider. Yeah, the, yes, it was like the car. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. it was David Hasselhoff. Yeah, I was gonna say that's weird to ride. <laughs> I, have, I don't think I've seen a kid. I don't think I've seen a kid riding those. Oh, look at that one. Dude, oh, check out my Huffy Hoff. Look, hey, hey, look up 1980s uh, Night Rider <laughs> Big Wheel, please, please. This is gonna give me such uh, memories. Dude, well, see, this is something that I would have done because you—that's a big nostalgic thing for you. You should have bought that for Aurelius for Christmas. You can find one, I guarantee. I know. on Amazon. Uh, I should have. My yeah. kids are too old for this now. Oh I'm my mad. god, that's it right there. See yeah. the visor on the oh, top. Yeah, Sick. Okay, guarantee you can find someone selling that. All right, so you see oh, in the back. Man. Click on that picture. You see on the back the red thing. You pull a handle What's and that? a little brake came like down e and you would slide, bro. Oh, yeah, <laughs> the power slide, dude. You would pull it up and you'd be yeah. able to slide. Uh, that's cool. Oh, I had such fond memories of that. Man. Yeah, I don't remember right. that one. That's great. That's because, yeah. That's so good. It was so fun. I, I rode that thing. See, you can buy one, Doug. Yeah. Okay. I bombed out hills with those. <laughs> <laughs> now okay. you got anything better to do. Come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, let's 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 have a race uh, with those. We'll all drive them around. We'll all right, so I didn't finish. Okay, so while you're looking for that, Doug, you what? Are you, are you heading up to Seattle? No, I'm staying here. You just you and Bree? Yeah. Well, so I like to stay just close to home for Christmas. Yeah. I don't like to travel. Yeah. And so yeah, Bree's gonna stay with me for Christmas Eve. Uh, then we get up in the morning. You know, we sleep in. She gets her stocking. We start with that. I take a picture of everything she takes out of everything. Yeah. And uh, I have like a, a whole collection of photos from years past. That's great. And then she opens her presents. Yeah. Everyone wrapped. I've never put out presents not wrapped. I always thought it was fun to unwrap presents. And at, then, what, at what point did uh, she stop believing in Santa? How long did you keep that going? Do you remember? I think she was 
12, actually. Oh, I kept, kept it going for a very long time. But then she also indicated that she kind of, of thought she knew, yeah, but she, she was just playing along oh, with yeah. it. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's where, that's where so, Everett's So, you know, maybe like, it was younger than 12. She's like, I knew at eight, but she's like, I kept it going because yeah. Santa always Well, hey, that's gifts. the value of being the oldest. I was the oldest of four. I got Santa gifts for a long ass time. Yeah. Because for the kid, for the little ones. Yeah, to keep it going. I mean, I want to perpetuate that for the longest time. I was so, so great. Yeah, yeah. For kids. Even though it is a deception, you know? You have the time You have the time Christmas I like. Yeah. So what did you? So what you, are you guys doing? One alone then, or? or I mean, all? not really. It's like literally like uh, gonna be in our room, right? So like everyone's at my house. So we're hosting. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. So the compromise was yes that we get to stay in a room in our room yes. while everybody's outside. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I feel, like, I feel like you lost that. Compromise, I though. yes, I did. Yeah, please, did. please speak <laughs> to the camera. Like please speak to the camera. A little, little bit of pressure, wife. you know. This like, is not much of a compromise. <laughs> this is like <laughs> yeah, fucking. Hey, here you go, guy. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> this, like here you go. You can you open a couple presents in your room. Did she come up to you? She's like, "You guys done yet, honey? You know what we could do, honey? I got something for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't we just stay in the bedroom yeah. and then that's it yeah I, you know why you know what i get it now i understand what's happening this is why she puts up with your shit because you do this for christmas for her yeah see yeah and mm -hmm. every other holiday yeah. <laughs> and twice a week throughout the week throughout the year no so, way, yeah, dude. Still, well they do a lot they do a lot of family stuff yeah. dude. i mean it's a lot of it's grown on me too though, are you, you trying to do or do you want to do one of those days where it's just you guys it, so like it, your dream in a perfect world so what we will do next year so that i'm this year is not the greatest compromise for me yeah but next year, the way it will look is on Christmas Eve, they were like, let's say it's going to be at her mom's house next year, probably, right. which is probably what will happen. Normally, Katrina and Max would spend the night there with everybody all over the floor. And that. They will come home with me. We will spend all day drinking, yeah, eating, having fun. Home. We'll go home Chris, late Christmas Eve night. I don't care how late. We'll come and wake up in our beds with nobody there and we will open presents for that's Max. Nice. Mm -hmm. And then- And then you'll go. Then we'll go over there. That's nice. So 10, 11. That's, that's perfect that's for so me. Reasonable. That's all I need. That's yeah. very To me, reasonable. it's like, that's all I want yeah. is, because all I want is that exact, that that memory of when my son really starts to get into yeah. specific gifts is that suspense of, did I get it or no, not? I get that. And I don't want it with 30 other people. I like want to f be there for that moment. And I want, and if I, if I want that moment to last 30 minutes, you, I want it to last that long. I don't want to feel like, oh, the next 15 people need to open their presents. So hope you like that, son. Let's go. Next kid. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. I, just don't, I don't want to do that. No, I so. get it. I get it 100%. And I feel like that's a fair compromise because super we're still going to go do yeah. all the other no, stuff. No, that's super so. fair, dude. So that's, that, that's what it's going to look like. It just so happened to be that we had already committed to everybody hosting at our house this year. So it's kind of like, what am I going to do? Tell everybody. You know, <laughs> yeah. We're hosting. Like, you, all need to, you all need to leave. No, no. You go, <laughs> stay, you go stay in a hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You so, all right, see you guys yeah, later. So it's like, okay, this is the first ideal. year that we had this real, like, you know, hard conversation around what the, what the compromise or what the future of the holiday is going to look like for us. And it's like, oh, it just so happened to be on the one where we're hosting. So it makes it a little more challenging. But going forward, mm -hmm. when it's at other people's houses, it'll be easier. Dude, look how much the Knight Rider Big Wheel is. $450. Yeah. $450. What? Yeah. Is it just a collector? So here's what now? trips me out. Who kept that like that? A, a psychopath. Uh, a, a how do you not write that? Total geek. Yeah, dude. Yeah. There's, there's definitely people are like that. Don't dude. you think that's interesting? How like some people like they buy just, a toy and not do it. Did I ever tell so you? Like I never to, open it. Look up, Doug. I'd love to Psycho. see the prices on this now. I went to high school with this kid. Okay, he was actually one of my first friends in high school when I was a freshman. When I first got to this new school, his name was Marcio, and he had uh, he, under his bed, he had like I want to say from the seventies or eighties. Whenever they really started, I can't, maybe I'm uh, the, getting the dates wrong, but when, when they first started doing the the toys in the McDonald's, mm. oh yeah, Happy Those Meals, yeah. he's kept, he had every single one, and wow. he had them still in the plastic, so it, it never even opened them, and he had them in this. He's big, a billionaire now. Oh yeah, I, I, I want to see what they're Seriously. worth. I think they're worth really good money. They were worth money back then in high school. And he was he was collecting them, and he never stopped collecting. Which those one? Things. Guess right now. Let's all take a guess. Which one do you think is worth the most money? It'll be things like um, like the first when Batman was released. It'll be uh, things yeah. where like, when like, when a, a, a you know which one I know will be worth the least amount of money. What Grimace? Grimace. What a terrible, stupid, dumbest. Stupidest fat purple monster. Yeah, dude. <laughs> what is Grimace? Yeah, I, don't know, thing, I like the, the burger. The collaborations yeah, I think uh, are the ones that will be the most valuable. Is when they collaborated with like a like a you know. A famous movie or whatever. See if, how Doug did on Google in here. 
Mm. I don't think we can find any uh, prices there. No, they definitely mm. have. I know I've seen it before. Just Doug's not the best. Do you know what's, do you know, <laughs> what? Was the other, what was the <laughs> other yes. ones? There was like a. I'll tell you what's. Come on, Andrew. Money. Let's go. Like Step a, up your game. I'll tell you I what's. Mean, what, so what, the most valuable are Hot Wheels, uh, and then 101 Dalmatians. You have some prices, Andrew. Hot Wheels. Are? What was it exactly you're looking for? Uh, McDonald's toys. Happy Meal are, toys. Happy Meal toys. How much? How okay, much? So how I much are right McDonald's now. Happy Meal uh, toys worth? What? The full set of. The Hot Wheel cars is around eight hundred and seventy-five dollars. Oh, oh, just say seventy thousand. Yeah. So, yeah. well, oh. just for the cars. I mean, I mean, he's he had hundred. I mean, he had hundreds of these things. He's yeah. probably got thousands. Do you know what's now. worth a lot of money? I'll yeah. tell you what toys worth a lot of money. I know this because I looked it up. It was Castle Grayskull, Castle Grayskull in pristine condition. Oh yeah. Oh, it's like thousands of dollars. Oh yeah. Yeah, dude. Huh. Yeah. I told like you that. what I so I what I'm doing with Max now, right? So when I buy him, so when the Mario movie came out, because he's into Mario right now, yeah. Um, they they made like a the the Nintendo Mario Bowser and like set like so I bought him that for his birthday but I bought a second one and I actually put it away so it's in the box still oh, I wow. did this because of this type of shit yeah so if it's like a piece that I'm like oh that's probably gonna be a collector that I buy him I'm trying <laughs> you imagine to imagine he grows up and he's like All right, dad I'm 18 you know my friend's dad had these like investment accounts for him and I was like, <laughs> like here's what your do you toys have for me? you're like I'm glad you asked son you open the door yeah, yeah, yeah. It's toys <laughs> okay you, here's what my day. my thought on it was this is that even if they don't end up being super valuable, it'll be neat to be able of to course. be like, this yeah. was like your first Bowser. It'll be nostalgic. Yeah, course. yeah. So I think at the, at the very least. Oh, over $1,000 for Capel Castle Grayskull. Brand new. So you never got to the bottom of some of these uh, these McDonald's toys, huh? I found some right here. Okay, thank you. There's, I know they're going to be selling on eBay. Or so just... there's a bunch that are listed for thousands, hundreds of thousands, but the ones that are actually sold, like vintage ones you can see right here, vintage Dukes of Hazard. They had Happy Dukes of Hazard? Meal for 800 oh. Crazy. 1990 Super Mario Bros. Happy Meal for 600. See, yeah, yeah, yeah 400, yeah. 600. More of so that's what my buddies look like. That he had all those like that. Huge lot of 80s huh. and 90s. Wow, wow. Dukes of Hazard would have been great to have. Isn't that and, and isn't that interesting, huh? I mean, I thought the think to have this is in the early 90s. Like so, yeah. this is like '96, right? Yeah, you don't get any to, of the joy of playing to think with it, to know? think to, to to keep those. As How a much kid. is a child's happiness worth, though? You know what I mean, Justin? Yeah, like, apparently you like a it. couple hundred bucks, <laughs> so you can sell it for five hundred bucks. You know, 20, 30, 4 years later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or I you, never, you let them? You let them a couple of days of hard work, like, like uh, old ladies that used to put plastic on their furniture all the time. Your kid's like, oh, dad, just stripping away their joy. This will cover my investment. This will cover my therapy for the next month. Thanks, dad. Just imagine you're playing with them. Got all the plastic all over him, Daddy. This doesn't Don't work. Don't touch it. Just pretend like it's muffled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, man, my mom threw away some action figures I had, dude. Oh, did, did your mom ever like clean shop? Yes, on, like, some, dude. You know what she threw away? Oh. All my muscle magazines. Wow. I had so many Muscle and Fitness, Iron Man, Flex Magazine, Muscle Media 2000. Like I had all of them, probably from 1990. Mm. Two how all the way to, were they though? Huh? How mm. crusty were they though? They're, they're, they're Jeez. So disgusting. Wrong <laughs> magazines, Justin. That's, that's, the, that's wrong, not the one. That was a Sears. Is it wrong? Ones. Doug, what day is this episode go live? What what's the date? January fourth. So we have so basically a little more than a week before we have the big three day training. Yes, for trainers. Yes. I, Sign up. Mindpumptrainer.com. New year. So this is a new year. It's officially yeah. the new year, even though it's not when we're recording this, but it's the new year when you're listening to this. So I'm excited because this is a, a massive shift, the biggest shift for, in our business uh, since we started it. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and something that uh, I know all of us are deeply passionate about and uh, can't wait to see what... Uh, what, what I am Equipping about. trainers with everything yeah. we know. I'm excited. So if you are, starts a movement. If you are not signed up for the three-day free training, make sure you get signed up for the free training. Mindpumptrainer.com. Element makes an electrolyte powder that has natural sweeteners, no calories, and has enough sodium to power you through your workouts, help alleviate headaches, give you better pumps. This product is exploding. People are really discovering the benefits of added sodium to their lives. These are fitness fanatics, people that don't eat a lot of heavily processed foods. They benefit. They tend to benefit from this type of a supplement. Anyway, check them out. Go to Drink LMNT dot com forward slash mind pump and on that link they're going to offer you a free sample pack with any order all right back to the show first question is from hope is life 50 do you think it would be detrimental for someone just to do zercher squats and not to do front squats what are the unique benefits of each 
Uh, I mean, it's not detrimental, but it is a very different exercise. Yeah. Um, be, first off, the weight is loaded lower on the body, so it changes the length of the lever. So the the, the core activation is going to be different. It involves some rounded back kind of lifting, so there's probably more more back activation with the zercher. Um, Front squat, I think, is very valuable. It's a very upright squat. Hits the quads a little bit more. Different core stimulation. I don't think one can replace the other if that's what the question is. Yeah, they're Front both valuable, though. Yes, I mean yes. for the most part too. And, and uh, I would say too, with some some athletes, I mean, I've used uh, where well, there's issues with wrists or, or uh, in that regard, like in, in terms of like the mobility of getting you know the bar to stay there. I mean, obviously you can fold your arms and you can do that variation for front loaded squats, but the the Zercher does provide a lot more like core specific uh, work, which I like, uh, and it's just it's a valuable uh, exercise in its on its own. So I, I definitely program that in. Uh, wherever I can. The only the only place I see them being uh, interchangeable or similar, or it's like, oh, you know, if you did that one forever and you never did this one, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Is if if you were only looking at it purely from a uh, leg development exercise. Right. So if if that is, and that's the only way, like I just see, novelty, right? Like you do right. for a long time. Yeah, yeah. So that to me, like, so I. From from a bodybuilding perspective, I could see this question, right? Like, uh, you know, hey, I'm all I do is zercher squats, but I never do front squats. Am I going to be okay developing my legs? Like, okay, sure. You know yeah. what I'm saying? If you're doing back squats and Bulgarians and you're doing all these other things and you just choose to always do zerchers and never do fronts or vice versa. Um, but when you talk about functional or like overall what you're doing, like there's more going on in, in the those two movements than just leg development. So I think that's where questions like these come up is it's like we tend to like, try it we want to yeah, isolate to body parts yeah isolate to a body part and be like well is it really that much different than a front squat for the legs it's like well yeah okay for the leg development not that big of a difference uh for your quads like it's not going to make a huge difference i think i think a zercher is going to be more upper body and a front squat is going to be more yeah. lower body is really if you want to break it down but you know what's interesting about zerchers hmm. nobody was doing them or talking about them for a long time zerchers yeah. were not even mentioned well, that's uncomfortable old, it's uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. We started talking about it. We put it in some of our program, Map Strong. We put it Map Strong. I feel like we did make it popular. And I swear to God, it's, <laughs> it, and you know what? You know why? Okay, here's why. We're I was doing them together. back in the day for right. sure. But it, well, I think people started doing them and then noticing. Well, if they get past the discomfort and get used to to yeah. doing them, they started to notice some developmental <clears throat> um, benefits and some strength benefits. Like uh, I like Zercher squats for uh, grapplers a lot. Yeah, I think if you're, I mean, in fact, if you look at Old, there's old Soviet era videos of wrestlers, Greco-Roman wrestlers, and they're they're doing a lot of zercher position exercises, mm -hmm. like Jefferson curls holding the zercher position, squatting because it, it more closely mimics holding an opponent. So for grapplers, like that's one of my favorite squats. Hands down. Yeah, it's very functional. I mean, anything too, like with a little bit of a rounded back yeah. sort of position like that. And, and upper back, let's be clear, right? Up, upper back. Be like, oh, lower back. No, Not lower back. Rounded upper back. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, what you're going to encounter in real in the real world in terms of like load uh, to get things more centrically loaded for me has always been something that I want to incorporate in my training because that's more likely I'm going to encounter that. You know, 100%. Day day. If you're going to hold something and like hug it and pick it up and squat down, I mean, that's a zercher squat or a zercher deadlift. And a front squat doesn't mimic that. But for pure leg development, <coughs> I'd say a front squat. You know, if, if you had to pick one yeah. for just the lower Develop body. The quads, yeah. yeah. That's front, why like questions squat. like these are incomplete without hearing what the, the desired outcome of the, right. the client, right? If the, the client was asking me, you know, that's could true. I do just one of these? And then I, okay, what's your overall goal? If you just want to be, if you want to be functionally strong, in the real world and you're both. looking for overall health and both or zercher for sure. Uh, if you have more of a bodybuilder focus yeah. where it's like, I'm trying to develop my legs. Um, and sometimes I do zercher. Sometimes I do front squats. Could I just eliminate one or the other? And if I were to, which one's better? Well, okay. Well, I think front squats, you're going to get to a place where you could load the front squat more yep. than you're going to be able to do the zercher. And so for leg, leg development, it makes sense for that. So it there's, it does matter the context of this question for sure. Next question is from Peck Youth. Bulking is a chore. Is there any natural means of increasing appetite? <laughs> this is where, and now weights. for people who have a, a challenge with losing weight, when they hear a question like this, I'm sure that it annoys them, right? Because they're always struggling to not overeat. But for people with fast metabolisms who have a tough time gaining weight, 
this could be a real challenge. This was me growing up. Uh, I, I mean, it felt like no matter how much I ate, it didn't matter, and the scale wouldn't go up. I wouldn't gain any any muscle, no matter how much I lifted weights and, and all that stuff. So I get this. So here's where two things really become valuable. One, drinking calories becomes very valuable when this is you. If you're bulking and you're having trouble getting enough calories to bulk, to be in a surplus, adding shakes in between meals or with meals or drinking milk instead of water, like very, very valuable. <laughs> Number two, hyper palatable foods that we tend to avoid because most people are trying to lose weight. That's when these can become very valuable. So you're at the end of the day, like, oh my God, I need to eat another 800 calories. Uh, and I'm just, I really don't feel like anything. Think of something you crave. Right. And then that might be the food that you actually go out. So it might be burger and fries. That's well, what I'm reminded that. of that one. Uh, I don't know if it was a it was a challenge. Yeah, it was a challenge where they're trying to eat like um, ice cream out of uh, um, oh, yeah. a sink. And it's like, yeah. and the only way that uh, because of the palate fatigue, they added in like salty fries, I believe. Yeah, it's so like, that it could go back to it. Counts, you go back to it. Yeah. So it's almost like, you know, if you're in that kind of predicament, yes, using some of those tactics in terms of like you're changing the palate up a bit too to shift into that to keep consuming might help. So th this was something that uh, plagued me in my teens and early 20s i mean i just i struggled so much with eating enough food uh to to to, to bulk and to put size on uh two of the the biggest hacks one was uh easily digestible foods yeah so like oh yeah because otherwise you get bloated. oatmeal like, yeah. rice and meats and, and this was the other thing was uh those easily digestible foods tend to be healthier foods i what what i was doing wrong was I'd have these, you know, Quiznos or Togo sandwiches and chips, and I would be, I'd eat these really heavy lunches and meals, and it would fill me up for hours, and I would justify it because it was high calorie. Yeah. But then what it ended up doing was it took so long for my body to digest that, break that down, utilize it, that it would be four hours before I could even think about eating another food. Right. When I was making things like chicken thighs and uh, or uh, with sweet potato or rice. Man, I'd eat that, and I tell you what, an hour and a half later, I was ready to eat again. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to eat more frequently by eating uh, leaner, healthier, easier digestible foods. That was like a, a mind-blowing thing for me because trying to chase calories all the time, I was looking for high-calorie foods, which tend to be these, you know, breads and pastas and heavier, heavier meals but then it takes a long time for my body to digest them and then my, and I wouldn't be ready to eat again. So Here's that was a massive hack. Hack number two was actually getting an early start on my, on my say, calories. This was a big one for me. So those two things. Yeah, because if you slept in, I, mean, mm -hmm. I, I know what happened to you. Same thing happened to me. You'd sleep in on a weekend. Yeah. You'd wake up, you'd get out of bed at 1030. Yeah. And now you're trying to eat your 4,000 calories. Forget about it. <laughs> yeah. And what I found was if I like, and this is why I love one of my f reasons why I was so excited when we partnered with meal one, right? Uh, Creatures of habit was that oatmeal is so easily digestible for me. And at that one that has 30 grams of protein. In it. So if I get up and I make myself eat that, say at 630 or seven in the morning, like right away, dude, an hour later, I want another right. meal. Yeah. And so then my second meal, I'm eating like steak and eggs or another like, like now I'm eating like a big breakfast. Now it's like 9, 30, 10 in the morning. I've already got 1500 calories down and I'm at 80 grams of protein and it's not even noon yet. And that just would set the table for my day. So though those things and for that, the, the last kind of hack, and I've talked about this many times on the show when it came to bulking, it was clutch to turn my my dinner from the night before into like a scramble for and that would normally be my second meal. I love the oatmeal thing right away really early and then my my second big breakfast was normally whatever I had for dinner, I would scramble it with some eggs and sprinkle some cheese on it and now I'd have this, you know, massive uh, you know, high protein calorie second breakfast and I'm already, you know, well over 1000 to 1500 calories to start my morning off already. Yeah, I here's check this out. So I'm looking this up right now cuz this was another big one for me. Uh and I mentioned earlier if you can have dairy, drinking 12 ounces of milk with each meal, mm -hmm. that's 220 calories each time. 600 and six, you're going to have Yeah, instead of water. 660 yeah. calories automatically added. 12 grams of protein each time. So you've automatically added 36 grams of protein from good old fashioned whole milk if you can have dairy. Yeah. Next question is from Cody Mayfit. You guys advocate for more straight sets with proper rest. 
which I much prefer myself, but it seems difficult to achieve when it comes to training clients for only an hour. When you trained, did you stick to straight sets or more of a one ABC, two ABC circuit style? When I was a bad trainer, I did circuit style. That when means. I became a good trainer, I stuck to straight sets. Yep. And you know, it, yeah. so, so spot on, like this is, and and by the way, I remember this, thinking this way and being challenged Well, I got to fit all these exercises yeah. in a workout. And, and <laughs> by the way, this, this is just, again, to, uh, not to make this a, a commercial for our MAPS 15 program, but I, I way overcomplicated the amount of things I needed to do to my client to show them great results. Yeah. You, I, I, w later on in my career, I realized, wow, we could do two, maybe three really effective exercises with good rest periods in between straight sets and get incredible results for my clients. Way like, better results. And I just, you know, and instead I felt like I needed to have 10 to 12 exercises no. in an hour so no. my clients didn't feel like all we did was two or three things because yeah. I allowed that to dictate my programming because they were in my head like, we only did two things today. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but if those two things are are far more effective than the eight other exercises you did, you're better off the doing that. So you can sort of entertaining them, yeah. you know, and like, you know, feeding into that uh, expectation the client has. But yeah, if you show them results, they're going to love you even more. And two, like uh, in between sets is where you educate, where you, you know, you add dialogue and all that other stuff to keep them engaged. Uh, and two, it's not going to take away from the experience. So it, it adds know, the experience because they does. feel good after. They don't feel like you just beat the crap out of them. Yeah, they yeah. walk out and they're like, man, I feel energized. On average, with my clients, on average, was it would be between two to on the high end with the clients who've been working out for a while and could really keep up a good pace. And five, two to five exercises is on average what I would do with clients yeah. in a session. Yeah. When I was good, this is mm -hmm. when clients stuck with me forever. Yeah. We got great results. They love me. They never skipped the workout. It was two to five. In the early days, it was like, 10, like 10, 15, oh, 20. Wow. It was yeah. just garbage. Yeah. And I was always trying to come up it was with weird ways like to I went through, them, a, I went through a phase just them like this exercises. where every, we, we would go over and it, would, and it would be, you know, bench press, bicep curls, then shoulder presses. And it would be like, do that exercise, do that exercise, do that exercise, rest. Do that exercise, do that exercise, do that, rest. And then we moved to another area. Oh, it would be, you know, a barbell back row, and then it'd be a lateral yeah. raise. And it, you know, so it would be these three exercises. That way, I, at the end of the workout, I go, oh, I got 20 exercises in. So ineffective. It was. It just, you know, and again. You'd I, be better off as a trainer, okay, with the average person spending the entire hour perfecting a squat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Literally perfecting a barbell squat. And I had plenty of clients where that was the entire hour where I was perfecting, gripping the bar, staying tight. Okay, we're going to start with this high box. Let's see how that feels. Okay, I notice a little deviation here. <clears throat> Let's activate this muscle over here. Mm -hmm. Let's try again. Lower box. By the end of the, the hour, we're doing full barbell squats with the barbell. And then they would leave and they'd feel amazing. And this, again, this is when I was successful when clients didn't leave because they got phenomenal results. Well, this speaks to your fitness tip that you gave the other day about you know treating the exercises as a skill. Yes. And that... You know, I learned this way too late. Dude. You you get way more out of the movement when you when you focus on perfecting that one movement than you would be throwing four or five uh, exercises yep. on there. Which is funny that we don't see it that way because everybody who's ever played a sport knows that. Like it, it, we, you used the analogy, I think, with the Bruce Lee. I think that was where yeah, the, yeah. The, the the fitness tip one came kick from. Ten thousand times. Yeah, like yep. it, and but we we don't treat uh, exercise like that, but it should be, and and you should understand that. You getting your client to uh, increase their ability to connect in a squat by say ten percent is far better than you teaching them ten new random exercises. Like you're way you're better. You're not off. even teaching them. You know what happens when you do it the other way is you're not teaching them exercise. Yeah, they're just going you're just movement. walking them through and getting them tired. You're just burning calories. When I got really good, my clients, if they were with me for six months or a year, they could do all the the good basic barbell dumbbell exercises with good technique, good form and good. And this is why all, many are not off. Not all of them that I haven't trained for years now continue to work out. And if you're, a, if you're a trainer, so I, I understand too, uh, you know, as you're, as you're developing, right. And as in your, your journey as a coach and as a trainer, learning to have this conversation or having the confidence to have this conversation is probably the biggest challenge, right? So, okay. Yeah. You hear us, you're like, okay, I believe you. But it's like, God, how do I convey that clip this shit? Like, I mean, this is the stuff like that I always get frustrated with coaches and trainers that, okay, if you're early in your career, you don't feel like you have the confidence to convey that or articulate 
why you want them to do it a certain way. Utilize us as an authority in that situation. That's what I would do. If I was the two two years as a trainer, that's it. And I'm and I'm and I'm listening to this podcast of these three knuckleheads that I respect what they do. And I'm like a new guy, and I'm like, man, I don't know how to explain it as good as Sal does. Like, I'm just gonna clip it and be like, hey, listen to this. I just yep. this is this is the reason why I only have you do the squat and overhead press, and we don't do eight exercises listen, for this reason. Listen, the easiest thing you can do, this will help, is uh, set the expectation. If the client's expectation is that they're gonna come in and be cycled through 15 different exercises and sweat and feel like they're gonna puke and everything's gonna burn. And you then go, you don't set the expectation, just take them to teach them how to squat. This, yes, you're going to get some pushback. But if you start the session and you say to them, Mrs. Robinson, today we're going to master, we're going to practice mastering the most effective exercise for your lower body, the barbell squat. Today I'm going to teach you how to really activate and connect to the muscles that are required for this exercise. And the reason why I'm doing this is this exercise can give you such phenomenal results. So today we're going to just practice how to do this. And I'm going to break it down into five different parts and we're going to practice all the different parts. And hopefully by the end of our session, you'll be able to do a yeah. full squat. If not, don't worry about it. We're going to continue to practice this so that you can get good at this amazing exercise. Now you set the expectation. Now when they start the session, it's not a problem. They know what they're going to do. Do you want to build muscle and strength or you just want to sweat? Next question is from hoop golf 89. What are your thoughts on the best gut health supplements? So with gut health supplements, is there a generic answer for this? Yeah, okay. yeah, there is. So you have to. Look, there's kind of two categories of gut health supplements. Category one are general supplements that have been found to benefit the gut, help uh, rebuild the gut wall, or or, or nourish the, the cell, the the wall, or the mucosa lining. So something like a probiotic, like seed, or probiotics. Right. We know that there are um, beneficial bacteria that we've identified that seem to have wide-ranging beneficial effects that also seem to um, balance out the microbiome by crowding out, let's say, the bacteria that can cause negative things. Um, there are things that help feed good bacteria that we know, prebiotics, okay? So there's that category. Then there's a category of gut health supplements that are specific to what you need. If you have SIBO, you use these supplements. If you have uh, CIFO, which is uh, small intestinal uh, small intestine fungal overgrowth. There's these supplements. Sometimes there's crossover. If you have issues with producing enough uh, digestive acids or enzymes, then there's these supplements. HCL, yeah. So you have to know kind of which category you're looking to. But I'll talk more general because I can't talk specific. Obviously, this is, an obvious, this is a general answer. And the number one thing you can do is take a high-quality probiotic. And high-quality probiotics have been shown to improve everything from skin to mental uh, health effects. So they this have an anti-anxiety effects, antidepressant <clears throat> effects. They have uh, positive effects on digestion and inflammation. So that'd be the first thing. I think most people would benefit from a good, high-quality probiotic. Seed is mm -hmm. by far the best. I have yet to meet uh, any company or see any company that comes close to seed. Second would be you know consuming um, foods with beneficial fibers that feed healthy uh, bacteria. So you want to have an adequate fiber intake um, in your diet. Um, and that's kind of it. I mean, you can look at like- Do you say digestive enzymes? Digestive yeah. enzymes can be in there that, mm. that might help as well. Although probiotics, it's, I put probiotics them much higher. Kinda, yeah. You know? Um, that's what I meant by, uh, this is tough because it's not really a, a there, uh, is there really a generic? But you said it. So a probiotic probably is the generic answer. Yep, yep. Then the more specific answer is based off of what your issue is. 100%. Because you could have a lot of yep. different things going on with your gut and based off of that, there then becomes better supplements to take. Yeah, like yeah. for example, some yeah. people, a lot of, there's a lot of people with acid reflux and the cause is they're not producing enough um, of the digestive acids that are required. So you could supplement with right. uh, it's what a is timing it? issue. A lot what of times. is it? HCA? HCL pills. Yeah, is, is yeah one HCL, hydrochloric acid. You could supplement with this apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar. Now, for some people, that's great. For other people, that would like me, that would make my gut go off. And that's why it's a little bit more specific to the person. Yeah, I mean, I tried that, and it's it turned out to not really work well for me too, because uh, you know I had different issues. So yeah, and it is so individualized like that. But I would imagine that, and, and like you said, the just eating you know fibrous foods <laughs> to move things well, kind of along and, and create this yeah, natural. I mean, this is also the system. The, this also highlights too the value of of going through this testing at least once. I mean, this is part of the reason with uh, partnering with uh, Dr. Cabral and his team is that and having that free forum for you guys to have access to yeah. 
uh, is to get in there Crucial and test. is to communicate uh, with that community and those doctors. It's free to you guys. You guys are followers of Mind Pump, so get in there and and ask these type of questions. But it, it's also worth the investment to get tested at least one time test, so you have an idea of what are the offenders and what are the best supplements. You, you know, for you. I'm going to say one more thing because I'm just starting to learn about this, and this is a I don't want to say merging theory because it's actually been around for a little while, but I think it's getting more accepted that the central nervous system plays such a big role in your gut health that the reason why some people continue to have gut health issues has more to do with their central nervous system than it does with the what's happening in the gut. Now, the central nervous system, that can throw things off, and then you can get things like SIBO reoccurring. Mm. But um, it's actually quite interesting. Uh, the effect now, what's funny is it sounds, it's actually quite obvious. We know this. When you get nervous or stressed out, gut issues pop up, either indigestion, people say, oh my God, you're giving me indigestion, or you know, getting really anxious will give someone diarrhea, yeah. for example. Yeah. Um, so that's another category of potential supplements hmm. that you could look at, things that help uh, balance out your central nervous system um, based on whatever your issue is. So I could see that category starting to emerge. Yeah. Um, there's Lower like something called uh, vagal, polyvagal theory, which is really interesting. I'm just learning about, so I'm not gonna comment on it, but if you have reoccurring gut issues, look that up, it's actually quite interesting. Look, if you love the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free fitness guides. You can also find us on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpdestefano, and Adam is at mindpumpadam. Adam. 